cool. We're good, we're good. Well, I think we're 16, so. Welcome to another episode of The Steel Entrepreneur Show. This is, uh, this is episode 16. Danny with us. Thank you, Danny, for being with us. I am excited to have you here. A little, uh, a little love to uh, Brandon and Rihanna, who who got us this far, who got us through uh, episode one uh, through fourteen. Who are not with us anymore, but have did such a um, a tremendous job and and really sort of um, cemented my sort of belief in this show from early on. So a little love for them. Don't have a lot of time today, so we're just going to um, fire through some questions. I've got. Uh, three or four questions, uh, three I think, um, grabbed from uh, a couple people in the audience um, and, uh, and a couple team members, so um, should make for, for some good information. I, I admittedly don't have them memorized. So, um, Danny, want to help, help me out, my brother? First question, find myself wasting time during the day best productivity hacks? This, I, I don't know that anybody really has, I've never met anybody who's really got this down. Um, a few things that, that I've found, actually I'm kind of curious, because you spend a lot of time like editing and stuff, so I'm kind of yeah. curious to pick your brain on this too. I pick everybody's brain on this. Getting up early in the morning, so before my phone starts to ring, um, I find that I, I get a lot done that way. Uh, working late, again, phone doesn't ring, um, so that really helps. Um, a buddy of mine, Mark, he uh, he told me to, I wonder if I can show you guys. That's my home screen. I don't know if you can see that, right? So basically I have just two communication tools, texting and, um, um, and, and Facebook Messenger, which is, you know, I pretty much just uh, use to communicate with my, uh, my now fiance. So I got engaged this weekend, so that's kind of cool. I'm not used to saying that yet, but it, there's no distractions, right? And the other thing is remove all other social media. So like Instagram or um, Twitter or Facebook, they're all off my phone, which is kind of a pain in the ass when it comes to running this show. But at the same time, um, I, I know for a fact they used to waste all kinds of time. I guess you can call it waste because I wasn't being productive on it. Um, so that's been really helpful. What else? Um, you guys have probably heard of the Pomodoro technique. I really like that. Um, or Forest app. It's a it's an app on your phone. It's kind of like Pomodoro, same type of situation. You set like 20 minutes or something, and then you go. Um, I think I, I prefer the manual Apple timer. If you can, you can find one online on Amazon or whatever. Get out of the house. So if, uh, like I work remotely, um, so from home or from wherever, uh, the home has so many. Um, so many distractions, like actually more distractions than say like a local coffee shop. It's just fine that there are less excuses or less things to do in a coffee shop. You sit there, you've got only one monitor versus like having multiple monitors where you can have multiple distractions. Um, another thing I like that I recently came across is called, I think it's called Go Fucking Work or something like that. It's a Chrome extension. Basically, if you try to go to Facebook from Chrome or from uh, Firefox or other, it'll it'll block you and it'll just say, it says in big letters, go fucking work. Uh, and I find that is uh, even, I, I expect it at this point, but it still creeps up on me sometimes. Oh, another really good thing uh, I recently did is I, I shared, I, instead of just like writing shit down as I go through my day, these actually, this is a two-parter and then we'll move on to the next question. Actually, I wanna pick your brain first. I put all my tasks in Trello as they come up in, in, a, in a scrum type situation and then I added a buddy of mine to, to watch that board and so he'll he'll like point out any any crap that I shouldn't be doing so if he sees that like I'm doing the same thing over and over again or if he sees that like why are you doing that like Josie should be doing that or Alex should be doing that or Serge should be doing that or, or someone else should be doing that he'll call me out and um, and he won't let me get away with that a second time another thing I, I came across is Penzu uh, P E N Z U. It's like a journal. So you, you it's kind of like I was trying to find something different for Evernote. So I wanted something that was like highly searchable, highly taggable, something I could like detail things, not necessarily tasks, but like things that happen throughout the day that so that I could like at the end of a week, I could review my week because I'm not going to remember it. Like I've got a shit memory, so I have to like detail it. So then I can go back day through day and pick up any insights through there and then turn those into action items and, and change going forward. I think that's, I think that's mostly it. What about you, dude? Office awesome. space. So I have my own office space that I rent. Yeah. I do my how much does that cost? Well, it fluctuates with how many people come in. 
Okay. But it varies between like four hundred. Oh, so you guys, dollars. you guys split a space. That's right. Yeah. Oh, that's badass. Is that here in New West? No, it's out in East Vancouver. Oh, you gotta travel a little bit. Yeah, I do. You think it'd be? Yeah, I would just. That's that's cheap. I would have thought it would be more expensive than that. Per month, right? Yeah, that, that... And you can use it and it's 24-7. Word. Whenever you want. I'm going to ask you some more questions about that. Sure. That sounds interesting. Anything else comes to mind? Just that, that one's huge. Yeah, yeah. get out of your and, house. And, and everything you said in the list yeah. is relevant. Cool, cool. What do we got next? Next question is, what is your management style? Does remote working change that? You have to come back to the second part of that because I'm not, I'm not actually sure. I don't have, I don't have a frame of reference. Like I've never, I've only managed really in one case and that was remotely. I wasn't a manager of any sort really um, before then. So I, I can't really make that comparison necessarily. Although I guess I'll try. I think what I, I try to do, I, I may, I, I'm constantly making mistakes in this arena. And, and so I've, I've tried to stop being so ignorant and, and try to learn about it instead of trying to learn about it myself, which is helpful to some extent but actually reading like books and learning from other people. And um, Danny, we were talking about clarity.fm, for example, like sometimes like I will find myself in a position where I just, I can't find the answers. And so I'll look at all the top rated like management dudes or like leadership dudes or whatever on, on clarity. And I'll buy like 15 minutes with four of them. Um, might cost me a couple hundred bucks or a few hundred bucks all said and done. But like I get 15 minutes to pick the brain of, of tried and true you know, exacts that, and it's like, it's like reading 10 books in 15 minutes kind of thing. Well, that's probably an exaggeration, but it's like the best way to, I find anyways, to, to learn something quickly. Anyways, one of the, one of the things that I found really helpful is spend more time listening, um, spend less time assuming, spend less time imagining that you know the answers, imagining that you know somebody's uh, wants or needs or motivations or passions or spend more time asking questions and, and listening and learning about uh, the people uh, that you manage and, and where they want to go. And through that, if you ask, if you can, if you can be disciplined because I'm, I'm all oftentimes I'm go 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 let's get them in we need them right now put them to work if you take the time to slow down a little bit and get to know um, the individual generally speaking the uh, the the result is, uh, that is the working relationship and, and what they contribute is a lot greater and if if they're not like sometimes people aren't super willing to let down their guard or open up when they just start uh, a new position. So sometimes you're just, gonna, you're just gonna have to learn as you go and continue to ask the right questions. Other times, uh, and this is a really good sort of interview technique, is be vulnerable yourself. So start by telling them something about yourself, something that maybe you don't share too often or some, maybe what motivates you, what gets you up every day, what do you want to accomplish, what is meaningful to you, and you will find that in return, um, they'll let down their guard and they'll start talking about um, what is meaningful to them. Really good book, uh, The Alliance. I've mentioned it before. Um, there's a really neat little structure uh, that you can use for interviewing um, uh, people uh, on their way into your organization and sort of setting expectations and all that kind of stuff. And as far as the remote stuff goes, I just think you have to be just twice as diligent uh, about it. it. It's so much easier because you, that person is not in your face every single day to let that shit slide and, and in some in some cases not to talk to them for like days on end. And I think that's a little less possible, at least, I mean, in, in an organization of my size, um, which is, you know, 20, 25, like full-time type people and then lots of other like part-timers, but like at least the full-time, the core circle, if you will, if they were all on one floor, it'd be pretty easy to talk to each one of them each day, right? But if, if all you have is Slack to communicate with them, you have to really make an effort to talk to them every single day or check in with them often and make sure, um, you know, that there isn't something there that, that you've missed or that... Um, you haven't imposed your own motivations on them um, or put them in a position. Uh, one mistake I've, oft I, I've made a couple times now is I, 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 I believe that I know what they want or I, know, I believe that I know what position is best for them, so I put them in that position. And two out of two times, total shit show. Uh, it was a shit show for me, shit show for them. Um, hurt the relationship, relationship had to be rebuilt, total fucking mess. Just ask more questions, listen more, and don't um, 
and don't assume and, and you just have to do double time when it comes to um, remote working. That sound about right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. What else we got? I know we're running out of time here. We're at uh, about 12 minutes, so All right, let's, let's keep it going. going. Okay, question three. When is it appropriate to turn down a request for a raise or approve one? So I was on the other side of things um, not too, too long ago where I was in that position. I was asking for a raise. And I think it's always important to, to have some ammunition going into that sort of thing. Like, you don't, I, I think um, you shouldn't just assume that, that you don't just go to, I, I, don't think it, I don't think it's fair to either of you really to, to just go into, you know, knock, 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 um, uh, can I get a raise, dude? Like, I don't, I don't think that's fair. I think even, even if you 110% deserve that raise, and there is no question about it, if it hasn't been discussed before, um, and frankly, even if it has before, I think, I think there's sort of a, a structure to this sort of thing. You kind of have to prove it, you know? Like, let's say you're, you, you, you're, you're making $25 an hour, and you want 30, uh, 30 bucks an hour. What is it that I'm going to get that I'm not currently getting as the, the employer or manager. What is it that I'm going to get more for that $5 more an hour, right? If, if, if all I can expect is more of the same, well, that might be okay because you're a phenomenal um, team member, you deliver, you're on time. There's, I have absolutely no complaints, but I think e even if that is true, I think as an employer, we sort of appreciate that, um, you would sort of have a few things prepared, you know, even even if you don't come with, I'm gonna do this much more, or hey, um, you know, I've been looking into this, maybe I could support you guys here as well. Like, how about coming to me with some like fucking evidence of what you've done, like what your contributions are? Because I might not know it, even if, you know, I might not be your direct uh, manager. You may be going to um, another manager, like prove your case. And that might be something like, well, you know, I negotiated this deal, which amounted in this, and the lifetime value of that customer is this. Um, or, uh, you know, um, I have for the last six months met or exceeded my sales goals. Or, um, you know, look at my customer service track record or like something like I may not know inherently off the top of my head your value proposition. Like I, I may not totally understand how your position translates into more dollars, you know, for the company. And it's, if I'm going to pay you more, I need to know that you're not only pulling your weight, but you're also providing me with a value that now exceeds what I'm currently paying you. And so on, on, on the flip side, you know, as, a, as an employer or manager, I've never turned, I don't think I've ever turned down a raise. And I think that's easy. I think that can become a pattern and that's really risky because, you know, all of a sudden your, your teammates or your, your, the people you employ get used to that. And so they get, they get lazy and they get sloppy and they come to you and be like, hey dude, can I get a raise? You know, we may have talked about this previously or something like that. And I, I don't think that's cool. I think um, I think you see, need to sort of set an expectation that it's not, it. you know, there is a process to these things and you're not going to be sort of taken advantage of or um, there needs to be some sort of separation between money and, and the relationship somehow, I think. And so I, I think I would, I would always entertain every request because it takes a lot of fucking guts to come. I, I think it takes a lot of guts for somebody to come to their manager and be like, hey, I deserve more money. Um, you know, even if they have this like well planned out, um, you know, proposal for why they should get that money, that takes some guts. So never turn them down. Uh, at the very uh, least, tell them, hey, you know, this is where we're at right now. Um, you know, we have this amount of money for this and, um, you know, I know that in the next, you know, in the next month or something like that, I know we're going to get some more money in. Here's what you can do to help in that, in that time period um, that might sort of further my ability or, or, or um, shorten the time between now and the time I'm able to give you a raise. I, I think it's always important for the manager to not shoot them down because then they're not going to come back. And you, you want them to come to you for, for that sort of thing. You want them to become, because otherwise they're going somewhere else. They're shopping around somewhere else. That either needs to be that sort of trust. And if you shoot them down, there goes the trust. And then they go off to your competitor. Just be honest with them, be transparent with them. And I think that's all that they can, um, they can hope for is, is, is somebody who's just gonna be honest with them and tell them how things are and, um, and, and explain to them how um, you're gonna work with them to, to make that happen. Because you want to make that happen. 
I mean, if, if, you, if that person is still around, that means you value that person. So you wanna make that happen. It's just how are you gonna make that happen? And you can do that together. Um, anything, would you add anything? Well, so I you've think, kind of been on both sides of the table a little about, bit. About your last uh, answer, I guess the only thing from an employer perspective from what I could add is match how the employer environment is. Mm -hmm. So if there isn't a lot of people asking for raise, raises, then should yeah. that one person even ask, right? Because then now that person is out of bounds from the rest. Mm -hmm. it depends on the environment. It depends on the situation. But, and at the same time, yeah, like I think you said as well, do they deserve it. It's also right in that they shouldn't always just outright ask for it. Yeah. I think that better to show that they deserve it rather than they ask for it. So if they are making, if they're meeting their numbers every yeah. year, yeah. or if they show that they're like a really dedicated person, I think even just doing that, it'll naturally come. Gotcha. Instead of asking. Hmm. Interesting. Kind of like prove it by yeah. showing it rather than asking it. Just but it also, does it not asking. create a little bit more almost trust like all of a sudden that money becomes less of a taboo and because right. I, I mean at the end of the day people got to get paid like right. that's that's fair yeah like it's, it's i think yeah. that's pretty straightforward yeah and if there's like this barrier where people just they can't talk about it and a lot of people yeah. can't talk about it but if yeah. you create a situation um where people feel comfortable talking about it and right. maybe that's one thing i've done okay at is because I, I don't mind sharing our numbers. Like money is kind of out in the open, more or less. Okay. So maybe people feel a little bit more comfortable. But right. I, yeah, I, I think there's a I think there's a big chunk of people on both sides that aren't going to say shit. Right. Like there's employers that like will see that you're doing good work, but they're a shit employer and they're going to take advantage of you. And if you're not going to say anything, fuck it. They won't either. Yeah, I'm not gonna pay you more, yeah. right? True. And I think that's terrible. But at the same time, you, I, I guess, at the same time, you have to recognize that they're busy people, right? Mm -hmm. And they don't always have time to be so proactive. Uh, I think a little proactive proactivity on yeah. both ends goes a long way, and helps to kill that taboo. And if if you can kill something like money and make that more comfortable, I think you probably open some other conversations, right. some other very good conversations, because you've kind of covered the worst or the most uncomfortable yeah. thing maybe so maybe that turns into something even better better discussions more openness yeah which and is good. i would say that that goes back to the culture part of the mm. environment right so if your culture is that you put you talk money out of the open and you, and you talk raises then yeah i think that'll show up more often mm -hmm. in in your environment but if the environment is not like that and no one talks about money, then yeah, people will be less inclined to ask for a raise. So I agree. The vibe, right? The vibe of the culture. I agree. Thank you. Thank you again for, for giving me your time. Thank you for giving me your attention. Our time is up here. Um, but uh, check us out next time on episode uh, 17. Um, if you liked what you saw, leave us a comment. Give us a thumbs up. Um, but otherwise, we'll see you next time. Thanks, guys.